Hi everyone, it's Coach Fred here, and today I'm gonna to be going over reflections of parent functions. Um, this is video number three in the series. Um, okay, so we've been working with the parent graph. Um, we've actually been working with the quadratic and these uh, absolute value functions, so we're gonna work with absolute value again, just to make this easy, because I think it's really nice to be able to see what's happening in an absolute value function. All right, so at this point, we know the points we wanna put into the function. We want our inputs to be negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two, and we know that our outputs then will give us two, one, zero, one, and two. Um, we've got this beautiful, nice V shape. Uh, let's see if I can make it pretty, do my best. It's a nice, pretty V shape graph. And what do we think is gonna happen to the parent function when I put a negative? Now remember, I like to think of everything on the inside of the function, on the inside of the function. So that negative is actually on the outside of the function. So I want you to think about what you think it's gonna happen to it, and then we're gonna test it out. So here I've got the absolute value graph, um, and I'm gonna see what happens when I put a negative in front of it. So hopefully you can see that it reflected. It, it looks like the x-axis has, has become a mirror. So every time we're thinking about these translations, it's really important that you think about what is changing. So if we think about this, all it did was flip it over the x-axis, okay? So we would actually say, so we'll say that, flip over x, okay? It's like f of x, but instead of flip over x, the mathy way to say that is to reflect it over the x-axis. Now, it's really important for you to recognize that it's a reflection over the x-axis. So, and I want you to look at the points. So did the x's change? So I'm hoping you're saying no, because the graph just did this. It just kind of flipped over like that, right? So what changed is not was not the X's, but the Y's. So what happened to all the Y's? Well, they became negative. So in thinking about that point to point, tra uh, point to point translation we talked about, if I gave you, give you a point on the parent function X Y, the point to point translation of any point on the parent function is going to be X negative Y because all the y's will become negative. So my points here would be negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two, and then two, one, zero, one, and two, two. But they all would become negative. All right, now, I'd like you to add a little piece to this. I want you to think about what the domain and the range would be of the function. So the parent graph's domain and range, the domain would be all real numbers, so negative infinity to infinity, the range would be from zero to infinity. What about the reflection? The reflection graph now opens downward. We call that an opening downward graph. So write it down for yourself, take a guess, take that risk. Okay, so our domain, oops, I've got an eraser, I need a pen. Our domain of our reflected function would be still negative infinity to infinity because every number can be put in, but my range would change. It would become negative infinity to zero with a hard bracket. You always wanna start thinking about this. That's how you review material from the past. You think, we just learned about domain and range. So now how, every time I look at a function, I wanna be able to recognize the domain and range. It's really good. Okay, let's move on. Okay, now we're gonna put it all together. I want you to try this. Okay, so our parent graph, again, is y equals absolute value of x. We know this graph now, negative two, neg uh, negative one, zero, one, and two. That gives me two, one, zero, one, two. I want you to describe what the parent's gonna do, write the point by point translation, and get your points. While you're doing that, I'm gonna plot my points of my parent graph. You could press pause if you want, because I'm going to ruin the movie right now, okay? So <coughs> we always want to actually do, tell us, talk about the translation in the proper order. An order of operation says that we always start inside parentheses first, and then we go to multiplication and division, and then addition and subtraction. 
So in this case, remember I always say grouping symbols first. <clears throat> so this is moving to the right one from there. It's reflecting over the x-axis from there. And it's moving up three from there. <coughs> okay. Now remember, on the inside of the function, it changed the x's. So our point-by-point -point translation, it's going to change the x's, where on the outside, it's going to change the y's. All right, so let's try this. Um, that would be x comma y is going to be, is going to turn into x plus 1. Remember, it's always the opposite on the inside, comma, negative y plus 3. All right, so this is a little bit harder because I've got three, three different translations and reflections in there. Okay, so that tells me to the parent function, I'm going to take all my x's, I'm going to add 1. So negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. All my y's, I'm going to make them negative, and then I'm going to add 3 to them. So negative 2 plus 3 is 1. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. 0 plus 3 is 3. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. And negative 2 plus 3 is 1. Now, I hope you're starting to see that the vertex, I always like to write down my vertex. My vertex is the point in the middle, 1, 3. We can see the vertex here. Okay, and we're going to talk more about that as we move on. But what's really important for you to see is the symmetry, right? This graph has symmetry, all right? And so if I plot those points now, I have negative 1, 1, 0, 2, 1, 3, 2, 2, and 3, 1. And I have a beautiful graph that's been moved to the right one. So this point was moved to the right one, reflected over the x-axis, right? So it's, it's moved to the right one, reflected over the x-axis, and gone up three. So you can see it really beautifully there. Okay, so it's like f of x, but it's made those translations. All right, the last thing is part two. And I'm, I know this is a little bit of a long video, so um, if you need to take a quick break, pause and just take a breath and be ready to come back because this is the hardest one actually, okay? All right, you're not gonna see this one as readily. So we're looking at the square root graph and I'm using the square root graph on purpose because I think you'll see it better. The absolute value function, um, you can't see with this particular translation and you really can't see it with a parabola as well. So we've got this square root function. Now remember with the square root function, we wanna use our domain and our domain is x is greater than or equal to zero. So that would be zero would be the first point I wanna put in. But we wanna think about the points, the inputs very carefully because we want them to be nice numbers. So I would probably put in one, four, and nine. And maybe 16 as well, but my graph doesn't have 16 on it, but you could. And the outputs would be the square root of zero, zero, the square root of one is one, the square root of four is two, and the square root of nine is three. All right, so we have zero, zero, one, one, four, two, and then nine, three is way over here. So I have a graph that looks like that. Remember, we we decided that that looked like half a parabola. All right, let's see what happens. And I'll put this here for you. Let's see what happens to this graph when I put a negative on the inside of the function. The square root is the function, okay? All right, a little tip here on Desmos. If you type SQRT, the square root function, the square root bar comes up immediately for you. Okay, so SQRT. There is my square root function. Now I put a negative in front of it. What happened? Oh my gosh, that looks like a really cool graph. Well, hopefully you're noticing it reflected over the y-axis. I can almost hear you say it. All right, so when you put a negative on the inside of the graph, it's changing, it's flipping it over the y-axis. So it flips over y. Okay, but remember, we want to use math language there. So really, we're going to say it reflects over the y-axis. Okay, but remember, we really want to focus on what changed. So let's go back and look again. What changed in this graph? Hmm, not the y's. 
the X's because again, it's on the inside of the function and the, ins the function is what's doing stuff to my inputs. So I want you to really think about the logic behind that. So in this case, all of my X's are gonna become negative. So my rule would be X comma Y, negative X, Y. And so I'd have zero, negative one, negative four, negative nine, and zero, one, two, three. So zero, zero, negative one, one, negative four, two, and then nine, three right up here. And so you can see that's a nice reflection. All right, guys, hopefully that was helpful. Um, I do want you to go back to and do these mixed review at the bottom of the page. Have a great day.